We have a very tragic alert for you right now. An incredible plane crash into the World Trade Center here at the uh, lower tip of Manhattan. It's believed the 737 has crashed into this speculation at this point, but at least three floors taken out, crashed into the side of the building. Joining us right now, uh, one of the producers with Fox Report, Owen Mugan on the scene. Owen, what do you know? What do you see? Where are you? Yeah, Brian, I'm on the roof of my building, which is about five blocks to the south of the World Trade Center. I'm looking, I'm looking right now at the World Trade Center. There's a massive gate hole uh, on the second tower. It's about uh, about 15 stories from the roof. Uh, it's it's just unbelievable to look at. There's a right. massive hole. There, in, it, it looks like something out of a movie. There is a huge well, hole in the side of tower number one. Tower uh, one. Owen, your your apartment is just a few blocks from it. Did you hear anything? I was lying in bed. Uh, all of a sudden, I heard what sounded like. Uh, a plane or something coming extremely low, and then we just heard this shattering explosion. I ran up to the roof and confronted by this right. horror. There's a gaping hole. I can see the south face, and uh, there are flames. There are papers flying out of the windows, black flames. There are, there are uh, flames coming out of multiple floors. Did it, did it sound like a, uh, there is one report on one news channel here in New York City that perhaps it was a jet, perhaps a 737. When you heard the noise, did it sound like a, a prop job or a jet? It, it sounded like a jet, but from, from where I was, uh, I just couldn't tell. All I know is that there was something flying through the air. And then this massive impact with oh, Trump, um, whether it was a jet, I just don't know. Listening to you right now, I hear a lot of uh, a lot of sirens. Is that what you're hearing right now? I mean, yeah, is I'm going to move to the uh, to the front of my, which will. Uh, yeah, you can just see it right now. You can see uh, emergency vehicles tearing mm -hmm. south on the West Side Highway, it's heading towards the scene. Uh, there are tons of people in the streets. There's there are papers, things fluttering out. Hey, this is Jacqueline Hall from the email. Bridget Roberts and I thought that maybe we should give the school's whole support group thing a shot. If you and your brother wanted to meet up for the next few Saturdays sometime, well, it'd be nice to talk with you. Sounds like something that we could benefit from. We'll be there. Where and when? Meet at 9873 Fairhill Drive. I can show you the way from there. Tomorrow at 11. Hey, this is Jacqueline Hall. We don't really know each other, but we have homeroom together, and I saw you on the school's list, so I thought I'd let you know that a few of us are meeting tomorrow to talk about what happened, as well as the next couple of Saturdays. 9873 Rosemont Drive at 11 o'clock. See? Told you should have brought a jacket. Here, take my scarf. Figures, the burnout didn't show. Well, now it's a party. <laughs> Why don't we start by all going around and talking about how we were affected by the, um, the incident. I'll go. Mom worked at the World Trade Center. Our mom was a wonderful woman. We weren't always close. You see, Peter and I were in foster care for a number of years. It's a miracle we stayed together. We spent a good portion of our lives being tossed from one unstable home to the other, wondering whether or not we'd escape those hellholes, whether or not we'd live on the street, whether or not someone would actually love us. <laughs> Did I say something funny? Oh no, nothing. I mean, how much could she have really loved you? It's not like she was your real mom or anything. Do you think that matters? Miranda, cool. She didn't mean to- Mean to what? Say that our mom didn't love us? That her mom was better than ours? That her death is insignificant? That her life didn't matter? Wait, I never said that. Shut up! I'm so tired of hearing your snobbish little squeak. You want to harass me because I'm different and you're insecure? Fine, let's rag on the girl with the pimples all over her face. Let's fill her inhaler with breath spray. Let's project our deep-seated daddy issues on her because she actually got attention from her parents. I can't. Excuse me, you just know what that's my home life is. Don't listen to me at all. You don't know what I'm well, like. There's no way that's in my family. Calm down, calm down, it's okay. Stop! Stop.
see you later. That was the last thing my brother ever said to me. I didn't even bother to say anything back. No, I was too busy doing my algebra homework. Too busy for my dead brother. The only one who really gave a damn. The only one who ever knew I was even there. If I ever even was. Was I? The guy didn't mean to say that. Stop. Talking. Well, uh... That guy sure knows how to make an exit, huh? <laughs>
can say, I'm an immature child, and I'm acting half my age. So what if I am? At least at half my age, I'd have my mom back. Whatever. Hey, don't just blow me off! Calm down. Yeah, coming from the most level-headed cutter I know. What the hell is wrong with you? With me? Why am I the one on trial here? We've got a freak right here worthy of examination. You know, all I tried to do was lighten the mood a little. Oh, you know, I'm sorry. Is this what you were waiting for? Do you want your damn popcorn? I'm sorry. I kind of lost it there for a second, huh? I'm, I'm okay. I'm fine. You know, I wouldn't want you all to start worrying about me. Where's Derek?